What's up everybody, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog and we apologize for our audio on the last one, but we got that taken care of and now we're gonna do the Challenger Dark Horse. We did the Limited last time, even though we had some audio, went ahead and posted it because this is the hot new motorcycle from Indian. New engine, new platform, everything going on here. Of course, this is a liquid cooled 108 cubic inch power plus engine. You can see that the front end has the LEDs. Those do convert over to your turn signals as well, along with being the accent lights. Taking a look around, of course, the dark horse being all blacked out versus the limited that was all chromed out. All right, nice deep saddlebags. One touch, make sure that's good. On these, of course, you have Little storage cubbies, your phone can go on that side. Storage cubby just there for your papers or whatever you might have. Down here is the lock on this particular motorcycle and you can see in the middle, it controls the gas cap and your saddlebags locking right there and unlocking. Now, I know a lot of people say that this is a copy of the Rogue Glide. I hate to say that, it is not. I love the true inverted uh, fork on the front of this one. This one looks more, more like a gold wing in any other way. It has more character to it. It's more shaped. You can see the twin vents, more shaping there. Definitely looks pretty decent as a motorcycle. Of course, you can see where the vent comes up through that as well. Of course, that is a power windshield. My wife will be joining us today to uh, actually ride as a passenger to get a passenger's perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop these down here real quick. Mount up here and get ready for that. Now, while she's climbing on, I'm gonna show you kind of where we got here. We have, of course, your left side's gonna be your speedometer, right side is your tachometer. You have your cruise control indication lights of on and active, left turn signal, high beam neutral, fuel side stand warning. Right side, you have coolant warning, you have your general uh, maintenance warning, tire pressure, traction control warning, fob issue, right side, ABS, service engine, and oil light. And of course, on the right side handlebars, you do have a little switch in the back over here to select some things. You also have one on the left side as well. You do have your start and kill switch. You do have your cruise control and you have your power window. You have, of course, your radio control and your um, screen adjustment control here. That's what that does. So you move and you change your stations and you turn up your volume, horn, bright selection, and of course your self-canceling turn signals with hold for hazard. All right, press this button here. Of course you power up, you'll see everything come around. Gear counter, odometer, fuel range coming up. And then of course you can press these hard buttons here on the uh, ride commander here. There we go. So on the ride command screen, of course, you do have the bigger, newer ride command screen. Of course, you can still drop it down there and change your controls to sport mode and all that. I'm gonna switch that to, um, uh, to auto there. Now on this, you can flip it with the left side. Has your current ride, how long you rode, distance, voltage, tire pressure systems, home link. Of course, you got your um, Navigation, you can split the screens with the compass, voltage, and your tire pressure monitoring. You can split it with the motorcycle stuff and all that good stuff. So there's quite a bit of customization. You can go through and customize those screens even further. When you're on the main navigation screen, if you pull this up right here, you can do map layers and you can actually turn a traffic layer and a weather layer on. Just like the other day when I wrote it, there's no weather around, but there is traffic, so we'll back that out a little bit. You can, of course, back it out here as well. That's what that's for. And you can see that as well. The map, of course, travels with you. Now, we'll say that with this one, you do have a cellular subscription service after two years from purchasing the motorcycle. You end up needing to do that. But then um, here comes another Challenger. They're selling them like hotcakes, trust me. They've been a great bike so far. Anyway, so. Uh, you can see the information that pops up there. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to that half and half screen. All right. Like I said, we're gonna have the wife on the back. Are you there? Yes. All right, and she's even mic'd up for once. So this is her first time to actually speak on the channel, I do believe, so except for the rabbit rescue one. 
So welcome Mrs. Hedgehog for the first time. All right. So this, of course, being the new Power Plus engine, it's going to have 122 horsepower, 128 foot-pounds of torque. This bike can haul its way up. All right. To activate cruise control, you simply press on this button, slide it to the left, and you will see the cruise control indications have come on. Let me get this thing in sixth gear where we're actually running here. All right, so at highway speed, we're doing around 63 miles an hour, and this bike is totaling around around 2,600 RPM, so it's not pulling that much at all in terms of the RPM band. I do love the live little compass. Of course, all the fun stuff that's coming up. You can see the traffic ahead, fuel stops ahead, all that good stuff. We are in sport mode. Once again, sport mode and, and touring mode and ray mode, they do not change the horsepower of the engine. They don't remap it. They simply map where this responds and I like it to respond right off the bat. So I like a really quick and, and sharp response. Now sitting here, and this is a big thing with passengers, and as my wife knows, we had the Moto Guzzi MGX21 with the double bubble little windshield, but we didn't have the tall windshield on it one day, and it caused a lot of turbulence. Like it pulled our heads together and bonked each other, but this one, what do you think so far? Uh, well, I don't really feel any wind movement from a helmet, you know, or from the windshield. I don't feel like my head's getting knocked around. The seat is very comfortable, very roomy for a passenger seat. Most are not this long. And it does have a large grip that I can use to hold on to or I can hold on to you. So it's just, and like I said, the legs rest comfortably against the saddlebags. I don't feel like anything is like, any circulation is getting cut off or anything like that. So far, really nice, smooth ride. So see, passenger approved right now, of course, probably wants a backrest, right? Yes, the backrest would make it a little bit better. That way, you know, I could lean back a little bit more, but it's actually not bad because I'm sitting in a comfortable position and I don't feel like I'm leaning really forward or having to lean backwards or anything like that. So it's really nice, comfortable position for a passenger even. Excellent. Now I will say that when you're coming up on a construction zone, they're telling you to drop your speed and you're in cruise control. Just simply rock that forward and it will drop your cruise control immediately. And that way you can get down to the speed required for the construction zone, which is what we're doing now. Go ahead and downshift that. I will say this transmission is awfully smooth. Of course, any of the transmissions that I've dealt with with Indian so far have been fantastic. It is a six speed unit does very good upshift and downshift very positive feedback the clutch is very light to the touch for a cable operated and your friction zone on it is approximately halfway between the grip and the full out position so if you use the msf course between position one and five it's around a three three and a half on where it comes out to to hit the friction zone Now, one thing I love about this motorcycle is how everything is intuitive and in reach of the rider while they're riding. Of course, you can change the screen, like I said, with the two little paddles in the back there. So that's one thing you can do, or you can reach up and this is glove friendly. So you can actually change the zoom and everything by touching it. Not recommended, ride, ride your ride, but I just say be safe and think about others whenever you're doing such things but it's all right there, unlike the Road Glide, which is way up there on the front end of the fairing. So it's a little bit different design, more intuitive. The balance on this machine though, is where it's at. This thing is really easy to get off the side stand. It's a heavier motorcycle, but it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it when you're riding either. It just is smooth and powers right along. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that windshield all the way down. We do have some more northerly winds today. So, when you're looking at this, I still don't feel any buffeting whatsoever. Of course, I do have the inner vents closed today, unlike last time. So we could check it with those inner vents open at the next uh, stoplight and see if we get any buffeting from there. But to be honest, we're doing very good right now in terms of wind protection and everything. Pop back up the sixth gear there and nice smooth transition. 
This bike just rides so well. I was impressed with it the last time. It accelerates hard too. I'm being very nice to this one though because this one's new. There's no break in. The, uh, the motorcycle I got to ride last time, I will link that below, was a demo model. It had already been over 900 miles or something like that. And you could thrash it a little bit because it was broke in. But this one here, I'm being kind. It's a dealer bike. And I want to make sure that I take care of it for them. But then we'll go ahead and put this back up there. And like I said, I'm not feeling anything at all, especially in the full up position. Now, I am taller. I'm six foot tall, 32 inch inseam. And whenever I look over this and I actually sit straight up, I know I have a passenger, so I'm a little more hunched down than normal. I don't get any buffeting up top at all. It's a nice dead air zone. And it just it's just a nice pocket of air. No buffeting from this machine at all. How'd you like that? I'm sorry, that car just pulled and tried to go around even though it's signaling to go. Pulls hard, doesn't it? Oh, this you know, really smooth. Like I said, no wind noise, no buffeting. Even with all this, even with you, you know, doing that to get around that car, I didn't really feel anything on here. There's no jerking or anything. Well, you had to grab on there because the thing almost threw you off. <laughs> but, you know, that does happen every now and then. Of course. Nice little back pop there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and like I said, I'm gonna pop these little vents open here. There's a one, there's a two. Do that stopped and safe. All right, take off and let's see if we got any more change here. So far for me, there's no change back here with those vents open. Of course, we got all the wind from the side now, but it's working very, very well right now. And the suspension on this, even with a passenger, is very good. It's very, it's very nicely sprung. We didn't adjust any preloads or add any air or anything like that. We simply just jumped on the motorcycle as is, as was. And that allowed us to go ahead and ride just the way it's set up at the factory. And it rides beautifully not being bucked off the seat or anything like that. No wobbles, no nothing. Just a nice, stable ride on this machine so far. And the Power Plus handling the duty of passenger just fine. Now the engine braking on this machine is fantastic. Most American V-Twins, or any V-Twins for that matter, have that fantastic engine braking because the higher compressions. Nice, powerful engine. Of course, I'm on this nice, horrifyingly broken road here. I'm going to aim for this little bumpy bump here. As you can see, no upset in my voice or anything. Let me get into the hole there. There we go. And you could tell nothing. It just glides right over those impressively, passenger and all. Even with yeah. extra weight, does just fine. Bike still turns very smooth. Passenger's weight does not seem to affect it whatsoever. Yeah, even when you were purposely going over those bumps, like I said, it didn't feel anything. I didn't even know a difference. <laughs> and you're on the fender basically, and that's impressive in and of itself. Usually you'd feel it to death. And this thing just burbles right along. We're basically at 45 miles an hour. I'm in fifth gear, haven't gone up to sixth. We're only pulling 2200 RPM. And it still <laughs> wants to rock it. Like I said, I've got it in sport mode. The train, the basically rain and touring mode, you have the same power. It's just how much more grip do you have to grab before it gets going? That's the only difference. Now we're back on smoother payment, and that's where this thing can 
go. Just nice, smooth. It really shines in this. Shines and bumpy, shines and smooth, shines and wind. We've got a good 20, 30 mile an hour wind today, depending on the gust. I don't even feel anything except for the side, and it didn't even get bothered too much. It didn't move it at all. Very stable platform for this motorcycle. Seating position, as you can see, my knees are down uh, against the tank. There's nothing in the way, no hardware, no, no anything to hold my knees back. Down to the floorboards, kind of slightly canted forward with my leg. Just a beautifully cruising machine. And like I said, we've got these vents open now. I'm not getting any weird buffet at all. I'm getting better airflow. I'm feeling a little cooler, which is a, a nice thing, especially, you know, when you're riding on hot summer days. But other than that, it hasn't changed its attitude at all. We'll go ahead and lower the windshield back all the way down. Double tap for that or hold. Now I got a little bit of buffet on the on the top of the helmet with the windscreen down, but it's not bad at all. I've experienced far worse. Keep it down for the moment being while we go it on the interstate here. All right, gonna give them a moment so I can have a little bit more fun. This thing just sings to my soul, that's for sure. This engine is so easy to get along with. There's just power everywhere. And that's the best part about it. Power everywhere. Maybe a little hint of, of a little bit of spin up needing to be done at the very low end. But once you get this thing revved up around 1800 to 2300 RPM, it just rockets from there. And it just, it sings a beautiful song. The note is low. It's just not, it just needs to be woke up a little bit, add a stage one kit or something like that and wake it up a smidge and it will, it'll get going. So this bike is handled to, or just designed to eat mileage and this fairing is still working very beautifully right now, even with the windshield in its lowest position. I'm still getting no buffet. We've got a lot of side draft and wind right now, but no big deal. Regular brakes are fantastic. They're very large Brembo mono blocks on two double discs up front, single Brembo rear. Trying to be extra careful here because these construction zones are tricky. And this thing shines getting on a highway, even at a slow speed. This thing is just one of the best all around cruisers, baggers, whatever you want to say I've ever rode. It's so smooth. The power is everywhere. Passenger ability. But yeah, the passenger's happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy on this machine. The machine's happy even with a passenger. Sometimes that upsets a motorcycle, but this one just loves it. It's eating up the mileage still. Absolutely comfortable. I got great visibility out of the mirrors, even with passenger on board. Just a fantastic overall 100% awesome machine that I will recommend. And this is my second ride of it. My first ride was on the Limited. This is the dark horse uh, and it does have that tilt sensitive traction control and everything. I just didn't goose it like I did the last time and play with it. I kept it to a minimal so that way I could take care of the dealer's bike. Like I said, if you want to see it, pardon the audio, but the last video was seat of the pants reaction and it was awesome. I mean, it was a great ride. Riding it in a more somber, cruising, more realistic everyday condition it is still an exciting machine it still rides very well i still highly recommend this bike there's going to probably be more of me on this bike to come 
I don't own one yet, and I don't think I'll be trading on a, in on one in the moment, but it will be coming when I can. That is for sure. So at any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog once again at Indian of Oklahoma City. I'm not a paid spokesperson by Indian. I'm not a paid spokesperson by the dealership. I just love the people that I work with right now that, that uh, allow me to do this stuff. So at any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks, and we will catch you on the next ride. Hey, what's up, everybody? Rabbit Hedgehog here, and I want to thank you for watching our videos. If you like what we do, please smash that subscribe button, hit that bell, so that way you can receive notifications when our latest videos are out. We also want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers. These guys right now are out there riding with you. However, if something happens, they are not ambulance chasers. They want you to give them a call or visit their website. They're at 1-844-533-2913-247 and at lawtigers.com as well. If you're in Oklahoma and you're looking for insurance to protect your home, auto, motorcycle, or commercial, give Derek Enloe and Associates Insurance Agency a call. He's at 405-261-1010 or www.inloinsurance.com. Also, for protecting our engines, we have Doug Crawford with USA Synthetics selling AMS oil and protecting our engines. He's at www.usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170. Thank you to our partners for keeping us protected and keeping our motorcycles running strong. At any rate, thanks once again for watching. Have a great day and keep that shiny side up.